Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for November 20th, 2022. Uh, we've moved from uh, the, the prophet Micah to the prophet Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah may not need any introduction, of course, as uh, the early church fathers called Isaiah the fifth gospel. Uh, but uh, some introduction, I think, uh, related to the historical circumstances here would be helpful. So uh, remember last week when we were talking about Micah, Micah is an 8th century prophet. He's a contemporary of Isaiah. But as uh, as was noted last week, Micah is is from the, the smaller towns from the countryside of Judah. Isaiah is prophesying from Jerusalem, from the capital city, from the temple itself. So uh, so there's that difference between the two. Um, uh, in, the, in the text that we're looking at from Isaiah uh, this week, we're looking at Isaiah chapter 36, which is a narrative that uh, likely your congregation uh, has not heard before or, or um, doesn't, is not familiar with, and then a bit from uh, the beginning of chapter 37, which continues that narrative, uh, and then we're going back to chapter 2, which is probably uh, much more familiar uh, than chapters 36 or 37. But let's start with that chapter 36. Uh, so just to set up the historical context, um, Assyria is threatening. Um, Assyria has, of course, a couple decades before this, already destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel and its capital, Samaria. And now they've come for Judah, for the southern kingdom. Uh, they have, uh, it says at the beginning of, of chapter 36, um, that uh, the king, uh, king Sennacherib of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. Uh, and then the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh. So the Rabshakeh is a military official, a, a, a high official in the Assyrian uh, army or court, and he comes to Jerusalem, which is still standing. Uh, and the Rabshakeh wants to, uh, if possible, avoid a long siege or a protracted battle. And so he engages in what is uh, psychological warfare, warfare, basically. So he stands outside the city uh, walls of Jerusalem and tries to get the people of Jerusalem to rebel against King Hezekiah. Uh, Hezekiah is a descendant of David. He's the current, uh, the, that, the king of Judah at that time. Uh, and he, uh, this is 701 uh, BCE. Uh, the Rabshakeh wants the people to rebel against Hezekiah. So he says things like, uh, I'm, I'm looking at verse 13. Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah, uh, right, so uh, he's speaking um, in uh, in Hebrew, presumably. Uh, he says, "Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria." Thus says the king. He says, "Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you." And he says, "Look, come over to me, surrender to me, and I will take you away." He says in verse seventeen, "To a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine." a land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you by saying the Lord will save us. Has any of the gods of the nation saved their land out uh, of the hand of the king of Assyria, right? So <laughs> there's been no gods, no local gods that have been able to defend their people from the king of Assyria. So the Lord, that is, you know, the, the, the personal God of Israel, the Lord is not going to be able to save you uh, who among all the gods of these countries have saved their countries out of my hand, that the Lord should save Jerusalem out of my hand. Uh, so it doesn't work. The people don't rebel against Hezekiah, but it's still pretty wily. And I, I, I want to contrast this with what then Isaiah says, uh, and then I'll uh, let you guys say something. But if you notice verse 14, thus says the king, this is a messenger formula. And the Rabshakeh sounds like a prophet, right? Thus says the king, don't let Hezekiah fool you, right? Uh, the Lord isn't going to save you out of the hand of the king of Assyria. When the servants of King Hezekiah go to Isaiah, this is the next chapter, 37, 6, Isaiah said to them, say to your master, say to Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard 
with which the servants of the king of Syria have reviled me, I myself will put a spirit in him uh, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. I just, I love that contrast, right? The Rabshakeh says, thus says the king of Assyria. And Isaiah says, who's that? <laughs> Let me tell you the truth here. Thus says the Lord, don't be afraid of this, uh, you know, this guy. Uh, he's going to die in his own land, which is if, in fact, what happens? Jerusalem is saved out of the hand of the king of Assyria and he and it's, dies. It's another move also that um, the representative of the king of Assyria comes to the king of Israel and the king of Israel in his reaction goes to the prophet of God. Mm. That's, that's, that's also a um, stepping back and remi reminding who's serving whom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you continue in chapter 37, Hezekiah then goes to the temple and he's, uh, he's got the, he's got the, uh, it's called the, <clears throat> the mocking words of Sennacherib. Uh, which is, if you think back to the story of David and Goliath, Goliath is sitting there taunting and mocking in the Psalms. The enemies are always taunting or mocking. So, And then he rolls out the letter. So, I mean, one of the reasons we choose some of these passages, even though I didn't, we didn't have verse 14 in this for narrative lectionary, is a chance to show a little of the drama of the scriptures that uh, for pastors who are up for it, they can act this out a little bit uh, as they read it. And but uh, you could include verse 14 where Hezekiah spreads out, it says, but he unrolls the scroll before God and says, um, you know, uh, have you heard all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God? Mm, mm -hmm. And like you said, um, the city is saved. The city is delivered. Um, Go back to last week, though. Remember the the, the surrounding countryside was punished pretty severely mm -hmm. in yeah. this time, which then leads us, I think, to really then uh, a very important thing, which is the chapter two piece about swords into plowshares, um, which is a famous, uh, you know, famous text. Uh, this text actually happens in both Micah and in Isaiah. They were contemporaries. Um which one got it from whom or whether they both borrowed from a common source or were uniquely inspired, doesn't matter. It says that many nations shall come to the mountain of the Lord. Now, dramatically, Sennacherib has, Sennacherib has just come to the mountain of the Lord, but he has done so in order to um, destroy it. And now this prophet sees a time when many people shall come and it, uh, in order to learn his ways, it then says that Torah shall go out from Zion, the word of God, from Jerusalem, and the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares. That's uh, That image is, of course, very famous uh, in front of the United Nations. If you've got screens, you might uh, pull a shot of the image of sword being uh, beaten into plowshares in front of the uh, United Nations. Uh, there's songs about it. The old, uh, the old spiritual, uh, gonna lay down my sword and shield yeah. down by the down riverside. By the riverside yeah. It's a great song to go with this. Um, and I'll tell one personal story. My, oh, my beloved teacher, Jim Lindbergh, who died just about a year ago now, one time in chapel, um, it, at Luther seminary, many, many years ago, probably 40 years ago, he went to the local farm museum, Gibbs Farm Museum. It's about half a mile from our seminary. And he got an old anvil and he brought it to chapel. He got two big, you know, I don't know if they were farm kids, uh, football, ex-football players, but the two big guys to carry the anvil to chapel uh, along with the sledgehammer. And he talked about as we're inter Advent now, the, the, the sound you hear in the culture is the ringing of jingle bells. But in the scripture at this time, the sound you hear is the ringing of swords being beaten into plowshares. Wow. Mm, that's beautiful. How's that for a sermon illustration? Beautiful. Oh, a lot did of work. He, Just tell about it. Did he hit the anvil? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, but you can beautiful. just tell it. You don't have to go get an anvil. You can just tell about that. <laughs> Unless you happen to have one nearby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wow. so. 
yeah, the 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 as we as we're approaching Advent, certainly a good uh, story and a good text to to talk about that in the face of earthly powers and human aggression. And obviously we've seen too much of that uh, with the war in Ukraine and various conflicts uh, around the world uh, in the face of that kind of human uh, war uh, and violence and invasion and power struggles. Um, we hear, uh, he shall judge between the nations. Uh, they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Nation shall not lift up sword against neither nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So uh, the king of Assyria, what's that? Well, I was going to say the direct gospel is that Jesus, who is the word of God made flesh, is the word that has gone out from Jerusalem to teach us uh, the ways of the Prince of Peace. Yes, indeed. Amen. Amen.